Hey, thanks for joining us for Unmuted with Marsha. You're going to love today's guest, Clay Travis, founder of Outkick. Clay Travis from the Clay Travis and Buck Sexton show. He's also a Fox contributor. He's an author, and today he is our guest. So, Clay, thanks for joining us. Let's talk a little bit about China. I know Let's that you've been talking uh, China, and we've looked at their participation in Afghanistan, the way they're trying to dominate Taiwan. So what are you hearing from people on this? Well, first of all, thank you for fighting China as hard as you are, because we need a lot more people who recognize what you do, which is we're basically in a cold war with China. And the analogy that I try to draw for a lot of people out there who are old enough to remember it is what things were like with the Soviet Union. Yes. We are deciding what the future the future and the fate of the world is going to be in the decades ahead. Is it going to be dominated by an authoritarian dictatorship with no respect for human rights at all? Or is America going to lead and triumph once again, like we did in the Cold War? And unfortunately, we have way too many Americans who don't realize that we are in an existential battle for the future of the world. And while we're all fighting internally, China is punching us in the back of the head every single day. And you see it from our corporations, which often align with China. You see it from our athletes, which often align with China. We need to come together as Americans and stand up to Chinese communism and actually start recognizing what we're in, which is a battle for the soul of not only this country, but also the world. And unfortunately, I don't think most Americans have realized what you have. And thank you for helping to lead this fight. We need to start to stand up to China and throw some punches back. Yes, we do, because China not only is fighting us, great power competition, trying to push Huawei for 5G technologies, uh, their military aggression, but we also see how they are trying to dominate U.S. companies. We've seen it in Apple. We have seen it in many of the NBA franchised products that yes. are made there in Xinjiang, where they're using Uyghur slave labor. Uyghurs are the Muslim minority, and they've turned them into slaves. So when you look at the NBA and how they are preferencing profits with China TV and getting NBA games into China, I, how, how can we get these athletes to stop favoring China and to realize freedom is precious? Martha, uh, Marcia, it's a great question. I was having a flashback to uh, the Brady Bunch there for a minute because I wanted to say... <laughs> <laughs> I wanted I wanted to kind of uh, to point out how crazy this is. I mean, to me, when you look at this situation, all right, we've got NBA players that are lecturing us about American failures who are taking money from Chinese sneaker companies that are profiting directly off of slave labor. I mean, this is totally wild. These Chinese sneaker companies are signing American athletes who claim to be concerned about social justice. And Marsha, they are bragging. They are bragging about what they are doing when it comes to those relationships because they're choosing to use, as you said, Muslim slave labor in Xinjiang province. They are treating the Uyghurs and using their slave labor for the cotton they use to make the shoes, and we have NBA athletes with sponsorship deals. Can you imagine that the NBA is allowing those sneakers to appear in their games? They're allowing their players to make millions of dollars. As you mentioned, they have a television deal with China, which puts billions of dollars in their pockets in the years ahead, and they're going to lecture Americans over how we behave the hypocrisy is staggering. We need these corporations, which claim to care about woke politics, to start to hold international human rights violators to at least similar standards that they hold American companies to. It's staggering the hypocrisy and it needs to change. Well, it does need to change. And one of the ways to make it change is for people to let the NBA know they realize Amen. what they're doing. Let these Amen. athletes know 
we're not going to buy your made in China uh, jerseys that you're selling for $119. And we're not going to support this kind of activity when you will not stand up for the Uyghurs. You won't stand up for the Hong Kong freedom fighters. And how dare you not support Taiwan when Amen. China is trying to bully, trying to bully them. Uh, let's bring it closer to home because freedom is one of those focuses that we have. I say every day I get up to go fight for faith, family, freedom, hope, and opportunity. And you recently showed up at a school board meeting in Williamson County to push back on a mandate that they were trying to force onto our children. Talk about that. Well, the most important job that I have, Marcia, and I know you've done this too, and now you're a, not only a parent, but a grandparent. I hope to be a grandparent one day as well. Most important job I have is dad. I've got three boys. I've got an eighth grader, I've got a fifth grader, and I've got a first grader. Uh, and all my kids have gone to Williamson County Public Schools. I went to Davidson County Schools, K through 12 public growing up. And so my kids, my first grader and my fifth grader, uh, started going to, uh, to school this year without needing to wear masks. And then they had an emergency meeting in Williamson County where we live. We live in Franklin, Tennessee. And they were going to require kids to wear masks. And they let parents speak. And I went, not as a radio show host or a guy who does television or written books or anything else, just as a common dad to share my opinion about whether or not kids should wear masks. And I rooted it in science and in the data. And the data consistently reflects that kids don't gain any safety from masks. And in fact, that kids, and I wish, and I know you do too, and I know everybody watching and listening does as well, I wish kids had no ill effects from any virus ever or anything out there that could do ill to them, right? But kids this year are under more danger from the seasonal flu they're under more danger driving to and from school with their mom and dad. They're under more danger to be murdered. They are under more danger to drown, okay? The masks that we are putting them in from COVID are not protecting them from a significant threat. And in the meantime, they are sending the message that normalcy cannot return in our country. And so I'm thankful to Governor Lee that he has allowed parents the opportunity to opt out of the school board uh, meeting uh, decision, which was kids need to wear masks in Williamson County. And look, I went, like I said, as a parent, we lost that vote, but I think we sent an important political message, which the governor picked up on, and that is to stand up for freedom and parent choice. I'm not saying that if you believe that masks are, uh, are important for your kids, they shouldn't be able to wear them. You can make that choice as a parent. I disagree with it. The science doesn't support it, but you have the right to make that choice. I am saying that every parent should get to decide whether or not their kids wear masks. I care about my kids more than anything in the world, Marsha, but they are not going to wear masks because I think it distracts from learning, especially for young kids, and it doesn't protect them at all. One of the few good things about COVID has been that children are almost completely unimpacted by COVID. We're fortunate for that. We should not hold them hostage to unjust fears. I completely agree with that. And I think it is so important that parents make their wishes known. And I agree with you that it was significant that in Tennessee, Governor Lee said, parents get to make the choice. That's and right. with our school systems, more choices made by parents and uh, working with teachers, more site-based decision making would be something that would help us to keep that governance small and parents involved in their child's education. Well, you're going to find Clay Travis online at Clay Travis. I uh, hope you will follow him and keep up with us at Marsha Blackburn. Thanks for joining us for Unmuted with Marsha. Thanks, Clay. Keep up the good work, Senator. Appreciate you having you me. You got it. Take care.